Look, guys, I get it. You know, you 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 put all your love and 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 hope into a new IP. It gets announced, and you think, "Oh my God, I'm gonna. Uh, this is gonna be the greatest game I've ever played." You think that. You go out, you get the game, you're all excited. You you put it in your little PlayStation or your Xbox, your PC, whatever you're playing on, and it's No Man's Sky, and you cry a little. Not not a lot. You think to yourself, that's it. I'm never pre-ordering a new IP, or a new game, for that matter, ever again. But here's where you're wrong. It's out there. There's a new horizon. Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> Do you guys get it? It's the name of the game. Horizon Zero Dawn could be one of the biggest new IPs to come to gaming in a very long time, but what do you need to know before you purchase it? Well, let's start here. It's not even out yet, and it's already won a Game Critics Award for Best Original Game and has been nominated for several other rewards. Okay, video over, go buy it, okay. Or you can stay and watch the video, that's fine too. Horizon is developed by Guerrilla Games, the developer that brought us the Killzone series, one of my favorite first-person shooters of all time. No big deal. Exclusively for the PlayStation 4 family of systems, and the PlayStation Pro is going to take real advantage of that. For those lucky enough to have an HDR-compatible 4K monitor, the game will run at 4K. And because of some special voodoo magic, 1080p will be a virtually scaled-down version of 4K, meaning no matter what, this will be beautiful on the Pro. It's actually not special voodoo magic, it's actually called super scaling, so it's basically Batman, but like Batman, it will be locked to 30 frames per second on both systems. No 60 FPS for you. You get to play as Aloy, uh, not Alloy, Aloy, a female protagonist, hell yeah, you go girl, in a setting that takes place a thousand years after 50 years or so from now. Civilization as we know it has fallen, thank you Donald Trump. And these giant mechanical beasts now roam the world freely, and humans have been reduced to nothing more than sophisticated cavemen and cave ladies with really technologically advanced spears and bows and various other weaponry, all made from the husk of their mechanical prey. Now, before the events of this game, this was just a normal hunter-gatherer type relationship. But now, strange new machines known as Corruptors started appearing and changing the normal machine beast to be hostile and very aggressive, actually attacking these tribe villages. Now, there are actually several tribes scattered throughout the lands of Mother's Heart, Sunfall, and Meredith. Whoa, that's brave. Meridan. That you will actually be working with to discover the secrets of this corruption. Even with their own religious beliefs and feelings about their cave lifestyles, Aloy herself is actually part of the Nora tribe, but was an outcast because she didn't know her mother? Uh, yeah. Raised by a man named Rost in the dangerous wilds of the future past world, Aloy seems to be more equipped to scavenge and explore this world than some of her sheltered tribesmen. A lot of this is due to a device that she's found that allows her to actually scan this wildlife. She's had to rely on nothing but herself, and Rost. And nothing makes a hero more than loneliness and solitude. Ain't that right, Batman? This is a completely open world game, so you are free to explore anywhere, at any time, with no loading screens, because this is 2017, folks. One more brief thing about the setting before we move on. We don't know where this game takes place, but Herman Holst, the managing director at Guerrilla Games, has said that there will be real-life references, so it's probably in the United States. Thanks, Donald Trump. We know we weren't the first ones here. Our stories speak of the ones that came before. The old ones. The world of the old ones was so different than ours. They had built incredible cities. 
with towers that reached the stars. But a darkness came, and their cities turned to graves. And over time, one by one, the tribes came to these lands, some small and humble, some powerful as kings. They say my tribe was the first, the first to hunt, the first to raise our bows. For this world is never ours. We've always shared it. A dangerous balance between man and machine. Gameplay is just as important, friendos. Aloy plays as an archer and scavenger of sorts and is controlled in the third person. And since this is, of course, an action role-playing game, Aloy has access to three different talent or skill trees, divided into three very distinct playstyles. Prowler is all about the stealth and boosting your abilities quietly, including things like instant takedowns and slowing time while jumping and aiming. Brave is all about your combat prowess. This includes a triple shot ability and the pretty important concentration ability, slowing time as you aim to line up the perfect shot. Finally, we have Forager. This is all about increasing those more strategic elements of the game, including being able to lure a single enemy towards you and just getting more crafting materials to dominate the game in a completely different way. Personally, I do feel as though Forager is going to be a must for the earlier parts of this game. Getting access to longer override times, eventually it becoming indefinite, and being able to just produce more items could be absolutely huge. Now, of course, it does seem like since these skill points are rewarded from experience, you'll probably be able to get them all eventually. Speaking of Override, this seems to be an ability that Aloy possesses that gives her a one-up on her mechanical foes. She can use this ability on some of them to create mounts, and virtually pets to help fight for her. And like, hey, do you remember those games uh, like Assassin's Creed or Shadows of Mordor or Far Cry? Well, you know how they had like towers that you could climb up? and then reveal a whole section of the map? Well, in this game, you have tall necks. They serve as moving towers of sorts. You actually have to climb the tall neck, insert your staff, giggity, and reveal a section of the map. Pretty similar mechanics. Worth noting is that these mechanical threats aren't the only thing you'll actually be dealing with. Humans can be some of the most dangerous enemies of all, and while we haven't seen much regarding this, we do know human enemies will be a big deal. Now, we know almost nothing about the main story of this game besides the setting, the fact that Aloy is special, and that there is some type of corruption with these machines, but we do know some of the side content that will be scattered throughout this world. Most interestingly to me are what seems to be a cross of the, the tombs from the newer Tomb Raider games and the classic dungeons from MMOs and whatnot. These are called cauldrons in this game. They're virtually puzzle-filled dungeons with unique and strong enemies guarding their powerful equipment. As of recording this, we know there are at least five of them. There will also be corruption zones. These areas will have stronger and more aggressive enemies than the open areas, but clearing these zones will reward you in various ways. There are also numerous other tribes that we can meet, and let's face it, they will definitely be asking us to collect 10 bear butts. Speaking of these tribes, there's actually going to be a dialogue wheel similar to Bioware developed games that will hopefully let us create the Aloy we want to see in the world. Campfires, once discovered, will act as fast travel and as save points in the game. Oh, and uh, kind of an unrelated thing, but also kind of a big deal. The lead writer of Fallout New Vegas is the writer for Horizon Zero Dawn, so you know the story is going to be pretty darn good. And that's it, everyone. Everything you need to know before you go and purchase Horizon Zero Dawn. And now, if you liked this video, please be sure to go and drop it a big old thumbs up. That really, really, really helps me out. Let's me know that you guys are enjoying this type of video. This is the first time I've done something like this, and I thoroughly enjoyed making it. If you haven't yet, uh, I recommend subscribing. That's a pretty cool thing to do. And if you feel like there's anything that I missed about Horizon Zero Dawn that you feel like I should have added, please be sure to post it in the comments below. That's what they're for, man. So do it. So do it. Also, on February 28th, the day Horizon Zero Dawn is released, I will be streaming it all day right here on Missledyne Online. So if you're subscribed, turn on your notifications so that you can actually see when we go live. Also, appearing on screen right now, right here-ish, 
is a video that is my most recent upload and above that is a video that YouTube has chosen specifically for you because they do that now and that's really freaking cool. Also showing up somewhere is a Patreon bubble. If you want to go and support the channel monetarily, that is the best way to do it. For just a dollar a month, you can get early access to videos like this. Thank you all very much for watching and remember, never give up, never surrender.